So in record, combinator effects play an integral role because they are the tools for sculpting the sound of your production. And you have the option in record of accessing these patches as insert effects on the record main mixer. Now, each audio track device and mix channel device in the record rack is essentially a combinator effects unit. There's the sub rack, and then there's the programmer, and you see the four familiar controls of four rotaries and four buttons. And these correspond to the insert panel on the main mixer. And as you can see, as I alter a parameter on the main mixer, you will see the corresponding control change on the rack device. I'll flip the rack around here so you can see the insert jacks. And when you go and create a device, let's add an equalizer, you'll see that the signal passes through the two device sockets into the equalizer, then out of the equalizer back into the from device sockets. And now the mix channel signal is passing through this insert combinator effect. Another approach for combinator effects programming is simply to modify an existing patch. During the development of the patches for the record sound bank, we were limited to using only a handful of devices. And this posed a challenge because we didn't have access to pattern sequencers or LFOs as modulation sources, nor did we have access to the Thor polysonic synthesizer. So for users who have both Reason and Record installed, you can easily modify many of the factory effects with a few tweaks using some of the Reason devices which I'll show you here. So let's load up a patch into the insert effects slot. Click on the browser and I'll go to the record sound bank into the effects patches and we'll select beat repeater. Right now I have a loop loaded on the audio track. Let me play this quickly. And so this is the basic beat repeater patch that's included with record. Now I want to make some modifications using Reason devices to turn this into a pattern controlled beat repeater. For this, I'm going to need a matrix pattern sequencer. So I'm going to go ahead and create one in the combinator sub rack. Switch that to curve mode. Then let me tab to the back. I'm going to use the curve CV. We'll route that to Rotary 4, and we'll adjust the sensitivity, and I'll program patterns here. So now this is the control pattern which is going to modulate the beat repeater. And then next I should change this to 0. Let me relabel this as repeat CV. And now I have to go and make some modifications to the programming. So first let me click on line mixer. And originally button 4 controlled the repeat effect. Now I'm going to change this all to rotary 4. So rotary 4 now controls that channel 1 mute. And then on delay left, we have two parameters controlled by button four, feedback and dry wet balance. We'll change those both to rotary four. And then the same with delay right, button four, change to rotary four, button four, change to rotary four. And now let's run this and take a listen to what we have. Okay, now I'm going to try programming an alternative pattern for controlling the beat repeat effect. Now I'm going to create another matrix pattern sequencer. 
And then I'm going to connect the curve CV from matrix two to rotary one, which is controlling the delay time. We'll adjust the sensitivity on that, tab back, and then I'll just do some random waveforms here. We'll adjust the delay time value to zero because this is a unipolar curve. And now we'll run this again. Now, matrix one is what controls the effect to initiate that switches the B repeater in and out. And then matrix two here controls the delay time modulation, which is adding all those cool little artifacts to the effect. I've gone ahead and programmed a few more patterns on both matrix one and matrix two. This gives me a few more control possibilities. And now I'm going to map these to the combinator controls. So let's take matrix one, click on it in the device list, and we'll take rotary two, map that to pattern select, and I'm gonna set the minimum value to negative one, and I'm gonna set the maximum value to seven. I have eight patterns, and then I'm going to take advantage of the negative one position, which will shut the matrix off. And then on matrix two, we'll map rotary three to pattern select as well. But I'm gonna set the minimum value to zero, maximum value to seven. Now let me relabel these. We'll set rotary two to BR pattern. And I'll set rotary three to pitch mod pattern. So now when the BR pattern control is set to zero, you'll see that the matrix is basically switched off. So the B repeating effect is going to be disabled. Adjusting the BR pattern control then scrolls through the different patterns on the matrix and the active patterns will then trigger the beat repeater to initiate the effect. Now the pitch modulation pattern is always running. Now if you want an off position, you can go to pattern A1, and program all the segments off, and this essentially disables the matrix. So now let me run this and show you how this works. So if you're really just getting started with Combinator programming, this is probably one of the best ways to go because starting with an existing Combinator gets you to the end result a lot quicker. And so as you've seen here, I've taken an existing Combinator, namely the beat repeater from the Record Sound Bank, and modified it using Reason's matrix sequencers. And the result is this cool little pattern controlled beat repeat slash pitch tweak combi.